hope you're all well. So in case you haven't worked it out, we are doing a hot mess today. If you don't know how to create a hot mess canvas, I will link to our previous tutorial on this in the description below. But today we're doing it a little bit differently. So first of all, we're not using a canvas. We've actually got a MDF wood sign here. This is from SNS Sign Blanks. You can see I've done the hot mess part of it. This is just ready mix paint that I've used. I want to make a Halloween sign and I want it to be really kind of colourful during the day. But at night, I want it to glow in the dark. So I've got some Rust-Oleum glow in the dark spray paint here. So I'm now going to coat this completely in the glow in the dark spray paint. And then I'm going to leave it to dry. Please make sure that if you're using spray paint, you are either outside or in a very, very well ventilated area. You are not near any naked flames and that you make sure that you're not going to suffer any breathing problems. Once it's dry, we are going to go in with the second coat, glow in the dark. Anything glow in the dark is meant to go on a light colour and so if you're putting it against lots of other colours, darker colours, you will need to expect to go in with kind of two to four sprays. I think with the colours we've got here we're probably going to need four sprays. So I've actually done five coats of the glow in the dark spray paint on this just because I really really want it to glow. Uh, three would have probably been fine but as I say I wanted to go with five leaving each one to dry in between just because I really do want it to have that glow effect. So this is obviously quite a big vinyl decal. Uh, it's just done in 651. You could do it in 631 if you wanted to. I had 651 so I used that. I've also got some paper transfer tape. I am going to use paper transfer tape today just because I've got the paint and then the glow in the dark spray paint and I've only left them to dry kind of an hour and a bit between each coat. If I was going to use my normal transfer tape, I'd leave it to dry for at least kind of 24 to 48 hours just to make sure it was fully hardened. But as I haven't, I'm going to use the paper transfer tape today. And I want to show you a bit of a trick when you've got a limited width of transfer tape or length and you've got a big decal like this. So I've come in and placed my first line of transfer tape. I've got my second line here and I'm going to overlap it onto my first one. And then I've got my third sheet and again I'm just going to overlap that onto the second sheet. I can then come in with my fabric brayer and I'm just going to make sure that it's all nice and adhered. I'm going to turn it over and again give it a good roller from the back. You can of course use a scraper if you wanted to. I'm then going to come in and peel my backing away just as I normally would with vinyl transference. And that's now on my transfer tape in one complete piece. If I lift it up, you'll see it all stays where it should, which is a perfect way to be able to do it if you're limited on your transfer tape size compared to your vinyl size. I'm then going to place everything onto my wooden sign. And again, we're then going to go in with our fabric brayer or our scraper, and we're just going to work it into our sign like we always would with vinyl transfer. So the best way to do this is to take the last layer on, so the top layer of transfer tape. So we're going to remove that one first. If you're having problems, which quite often you can do if you've used paint or spray paint, you just want to get a scraper and you're going to pull your transfer tape over your scraper and you're just going to keep pulling back and pushing down with your scraper. I find that this method helps a lot, especially with a project like this or if you're using a canvas.
then you really want to go in with your fabric brayer, non-stick roller or a scraper, preferably with a little bit of felt on it and just really, really work that vinyl into the wood. You want it to be nice and adhered on there with no loose bits because we do not want any bleed. So just really, really go in and make sure that you give it a good roller or a good scrape. I've got some black spray paint here and I'm going to cover everything in the black spray paint. So I like to leave it for about 10 minutes to dry so it's not wet but it's it's touchable uh, but it's not fully dry either. There's a little bit of tack there still. This is the bit that I always enjoy the most and it is coming in and peeling up all the vinyl and I just love being able to see what's revealed underneath. Mm -hmm. 